When you're cutting with a torch attachment, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, let's talk about the actual manifold. So on top of here, we got two valves. On the left, you have your um, fuel valve. So this is just like the preheat valve on your normal torch. And then on the right, you have the preheat oxygen valve. So this would be like the either the third valve that you have on a hand torch on like a Victor style torch, or the one in the back on a Harris torch they use to adjust that preheat flame. Underneath here, we have an electronically controlled valve that acts like the cutting lever. So instead of having to um, press a lever manually, the computer itself is gonna turn on that cutting jet and start cutting. Another thing to keep in mind is that you wanna make sure you're using the right tip for the right fuel. So if you're cutting with acetylene, make sure you're using this single piece tip. So this copper piece and this brass piece in the top will not come apart. If you're using propane or natural gas, you're gonna to wanna to use one of these two piece tips that come apart just like this. If you use the wrong tip, you'll know pretty quickly, the flame won't, won't burn right. Um, but just before you put the tip in, make sure it's the right style for the fuel gas you're using. Once I've set the materials on the materials pane, we're, we're ready to run. So I'm gonna come over here and move the torch off the edge of the material and turn the fuel on, light my torch, and set the neutral flame how I like it. Once you've set the neutral flame, you can do a quick test of the cutting jet by holding down on this oxygen button on the right side. That's gonna do a quick burst of oxygen so you can make sure that the cones are doing what you expect them to do uh, during the cutting. When you're cutting with plasma, you can do a test of the torch just like you can with the OxyFuel with the O2 button. If you click on this lightning bolt here, it'll do a quick blip with that plasma cutter turning on, and you can either do a manual cut by moving around like this, or you can just use it as a test to make sure your plasma cutter is working how you expect. Once you set your flame right, you can go ahead and click start. It's gonna raise up and move over to your first pierce point. Once it's there, you can lower it down manually to whatever you think is the right height for cutting. Um, with propane or natural gas, it's gonna be a little bit higher off the material than with acetylene. It's gonna sit here, it's gonna preheat that material, and whenever you're ready, click pierce. If you click pierce too early, you can always pause and rewind back to the beginning, but to avoid having to do that, you can also do just a quick test burst with this auction button, just like you did when you're setting the flame. That'll let you know if the material is hot enough to go ahead and do a pierce. Um, another thing you can do is since it doesn't have a preheat timer on this very first pierce, you can sit there and just count in your head how long it took for it to get up to that uh, like kindling temperature so you can pierce it, and then go back to materials and set your preheat time to whatever value you got when you just counted that off. That way, for your subsequent pierces, it's gonna wait for the correct amount of time. So I'm gonna do a cut real quick and show you kind of how all these things can interrelate to each other. Let's go ahead and just make a, uh, I'm actually just gonna clone this and we'll cut three rectangles. Uh, that's a good place right there, cut it right there. And then let's say we're cutting with the number zero tip, cut in steel, and it is three eighths. And I'm going to increase these so they're the time so it's more obvious. So we'll just set this to five seconds. We'll set this to 10. All right, so with the torch, it's going to go and move to this first shape. I'm going to take the cap off the marker. Lower this thing down. And then since this is the first cut, there's no timer on this one, I have to click pierce manually. Once I click pierce, you're gonna see a countdown timer or a countdown bar for how long it's waiting. So click pierce. And as that green bar goes down, it's getting closer to when it starts to move. If it's actually not done piercing yet, you can sit here and add more time so it waits for a longer period of time before actually moving. And if if it's done piercing before the timers run out, you can also just click go now and it's gonna move automatically. When you have this bar at the bottom set to 100%, it's going to be exactly the speed, the feed rate that you've set in the materials. But if you increase this or decrease it, it's gonna be a certain percentage of um, the cut that you set in materials. So we'll go let this one finish out. 
So now for the second cut, what it's gonna do is it's gonna wait for however long the pre time is. So see, it's waiting here. I can also add more time. And then when it's run out, you're gonna see that it is gonna pierce, rise up, and then wait again for the pierce delay and start moving. So it rose up, it's waiting for that pierce timer. And when it's done, it's gonna go and start moving. Again, I'll go and speed this thing up and let it cut. One thing to notice here is that it's leading in from the previously cut shape since it's an outside shape. Go ahead and pierce this. Go ahead. So let's say that you're cutting with a torch and you've turned this uh, feed override up too high. You might end up outrunning the cut. What you can do then is click pause and then hold down this rewind button to go back to where um, it left off on the cut. If you go too far, you can just go forward a little bit more as well. If you don't want to pierce right in the line because you want to still preserve a good cut, you can also do an offset and move the torch a little bit away from the cut before resuming. When you click resume, you're again gonna have to click pierce when it's preheated. So I'm gonna click on this. Again, rise up, pierce timer, it's gonna lower down and continue off right where we left off. So overall, the materials, you should be able to keep this uh, to the default values, but if there are any changes you wanna make, you can click edit make your changes to these values, and then it'll save it on, on the machine. And next time you come to use it, it'll remember what you'd already changed it to. If you do make a change to some of the values on the machine and you wanna go back to what it was the default, you can click on this yellow button and it's gonna take it back to the default value. So edit and back to default. Click done. So here's an example of what it can look like doing a cut with the Omic probe on with plasma. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut with a couple different squares. And we'll just do a random series of squares. So already placed these down. We'll go to materials. We'll set this to hypertherm 85, steel 3 8 Then on the probe, if you do no probe, you're gonna to have to lower it down manually, which is what you do with the torch since you can't do a ohmic probe with the flame on. If you set it to probe on first pierce, it's gonna go do a touch off in the very first cut and then just keep that same height for all of them. And then I'll show the each pierce next. So we go to run, it's thinking, all done. So now it's going to go and lower down and touch off. If you want to trigger it before it actually successfully touches off, you can click that trigger as well and it'll just manually do it. So click pierce. It's gonna go do its thing. Then you'll notice on the next cut, since I set it to probe on first pierce, it's going to use that same height value and go and auto pierce without doing a probe. It's going to end that. If I set it to probe on each pierce, it's gonna be pretty much the same, but it's gonna do that touch off probe for every cut. So again, go here and probe off. There you go. That's what probing looks like with the plasma.